Hello, hello. Welcome on into another episode of the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm Will. I'm Sarah. I'm Matt. On today's episode, we're finally getting around to Will it. This is the Green Top three year old family reserve rye. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click that notification bell. Matt, four and a half years and we're finally getting around to Will it. Finally getting to Will it. Look, it has a pretty label. I do really like this label. It's really pretty. Isn't that cool? It's got a bird on top there. Don't you like the little bird and little crown? It's cool. All right. So the reason for that bird and crown there is the Willet story. This guy named Edward Willet went to London in 1674 and he was 13 years old. And 10 years later, he became a pewterer. And that's his mark, is that bird and crown thing. So cool. Makes sense. It has absolutely nothing to do besides the family crest. But I thought it was cool anyway. So I guess it's on their other bottles. So uh, later on, he moved to this place called Maryland in 1692. Then 100 years later, his family moved uh, in some county to, 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 to a place called Kentucky. In a little place called Nelson County, Bardstown bought a farm. Might have some famous distillers there nowadays. So several generations worked in distilleries uh, in the 1800s. And eventually, turn, a few of them would turn to this place called Tom Moore, which we'll talk about another time. But this particular one didn't was founded in 1936. Three years of Prohibition, the Wilt Distillery was started there on the farm. In 1937, they filled their first barrel. It was put into a warehouse A to eight in the 1940s. The old Bardstown, Kentucky straight bourbon was created that I think we all enjoy. 1960s, Johnny Drum was created for a wholesaler in California. Of course, it's a major brand nowadays. Then they decided this brilliant plan. Let's make uh, ethanol. Let's do that during the, during the OPEC crisis. And um, let's stop making whiskey. Well, that was sex for a little bit. And then uh, they kind of basically destroyed their business at this point in time. Had to become a non-distiller producer and an independent bottler only at this point in time in the 1980s. So, you know, went on to f fill out some other brands. Of course, they, just bought, they had some of them left over and fill those up into bottles. And then they were sourcing a bunch of stuff and putting those into bottles as well. So, uh, come the 1990s, they created the Small Batch Boutique Bourbon Collection to compete with this guy named Jim Bean's collection. It was also the Small Batch collection. So in that collection is the Rowan's Creek, the Noah's Milk, Kentucky Vintage, and Pure Kentucky, which we will review for you guys at some point in time. So it took them all the way to 2012 to finally get their shit together and get distilling again. You know, so good job, guys. And at that time, so they said in 2008, they decided to re-put out this label here with the Willet Reserve and their, as we know, their bullet, their uh, bourbon in the pot still, which either is a like or hate relationship, which we'll also cover at some point for you guys. Uh, that came out in 2008, and of course, those are being sourced. Now, this one, they actually make this one, uh, which is nice. They opened the Visitor Center in 2011. They currently have a column still, a doubler, and a pot still for production, as well as eight little warehouses that hold five to 6,000 rows, which isn't very many for a Kentucky so It's pretty small warehouses. Like, that's nothing. There's some of the other ones that can hold 40, 50 to 100,000 of the other distillers, so it's pretty small. They got to rejoin the Kentucky Distillers Association because, you know, when you don't make anything, it's kind of hard to be on there. So lucky them. And they were on the craft because they were small for a while. Now they're on the bigger one now because they, they made more whiskey. Well, good for them. In 2019, they opened up an on-site bar called the Bar at Willet. Well, they were very creative with that name. Good job, guys. You couldn't call it like Bird with Crown or something cool like that. I mean, <laughs> Bird with Crown along those names, <laughs> but you know, whatever. They also serve uh, small foods. All right, so what's in the ball? So, like I said, this is three years old. This is the uh, this small. This is the Willet Straight Rye Family Reserve Estate uh, Small Batch. It is cast strength 53.7 percent, so very nice. It uses a combination of different mash bills of their higher arches: 74 rye, 11 corn. 15 malted barley, along with their low rye, which is 51% corn, 34, sorry, 51% rye, 30%, 34% corn, and 15 malted barley. This originally was a two-year release, then became a three, which we are reviewing, and there's also the standard one now out as a four-year release, which review some fun. Now, back when I was getting these, these were $32, which was Jesus. all wow. Okay. Now the four years are up to like 80, 85. So even when I was buying the four years, they still didn't cost them, they were like 40. But yeah, so I give a ton of these away as gifts because I'm like, oh, these are really great gifts for people. And now I'm like, hmm, oh, well, no, guess people got a lot of good gifts because <laughs> I was buying them for dirt cheap because you get them by the case, you get for like 30 bucks. So, oh, well. Right. You know, like All right, let's see what we think. Well, this is very spearmint forward. Yes, it is a and rye, 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 rye. Yeah, a little bit of dill, a little bit of anise. Yeah, I don't get peppermint, pumpernickel. Oh, there it is. It's it's mostly hidden behind the spearmint for and me, but it's black pepper, black pepper, candy cane, mm -hmm. lemon lime, 
I would even say it's a little medicinal and like a hot, wet grass with some caramel apple. Like, uh, not quite NyQuil medicinal, but pretty medicinal. But I like, but I like that, that note proof, a lot. Look at that proof on the nose right there, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a nice spicy bite, bitey ride that I really enjoy. Yeah. As you can see, based on the consumption of this bottle, I enjoy this one. Really enjoy. So, and this is... Uh, I might have gone through a few of these at this point in time. It smells very clean. It smells it really very does. clean cut mm -hmm. grass. It smells very yeah. spring day. It mm -hmm. smells very refreshing. Yeah, and and like pollen in the air. Yeah, I don't like that smell. I, I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's even floral. It's even flower, maybe like yeah. a yeah. white yeah, flower. Like a white flower, yeah. Yeah, I, I like the way it smells. I'm a big fan of this whiskey in general. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's a good spicy rye. Mm -hmm. mm. Interesting caramel yeah, apple, it's... toffee, black pepper, mint, it's eucalyptus, mint, peppermint. Mm -hmm. Lots of that. Banana nut bread. Lots of rye, all spice, coriander, fun, white pepper. I got the sensation of like a combination of like a big, big chew gum, like the cinnamon gum. Yeah, mixed big with the spearmint gum, like a yeah, big yeah. red gum. So you're gonna mixed take one spearmint. piece of each. Yeah, like a half a stick of each. Are you gonna? Okay. I can see that. Yeah. Big red in, maybe. Yeah. yeah. There's an interesting sensation across the first palate. Yeah, it's got a nice clove, lemon lime. It almost has like a it almost has a Mountain Dew taste to it, even I would say. I don't drink Mountain Dew. I love Mountain Dew. Most of these lemon lime coming out. But I really want to try. On the second sip for me, I got a lemon lime wrapped red apple, and I'm getting I'm getting like a red apple like I would from a lot of bourbons. I'm assuming that's the high rye, the high corn content. Yeah, because it doesn't say what the percentages of the two mashables that go together. In right, it. it is very citrusy for a rye. yeah, very citrusy and spicy at the same time. It's and super spicy interesting at the same rye. time. Yeah, yeah, and, and it doesn't nice doesn't really pepper. have that. That strong dill that mm -hmm. no, it really doesn't. Like it did a little on the nose, but it doesn't doesn't present itself as much on the palate at all. I think the mintiness of it, if it's there, covers. Yeah, it. yeah. I really like it. Between the cinnamon and the mint, and I pick up the dill, but I don't pick up dill pickle so much as I pick up dill weed. Just dill the, weed. an actual uh, the actual uh, spice or the spice. actual yeah. uh, we want to call it grass or. It's a spice. It is. A spice. Yeah, Dill's a spice. Mm. It is. I like it. It's not that I bad. Especially for the money, like I said, back in the day, 32 bucks. Back in the day. Now, what do these go for now for a four-year? Like I said, now the four-year versions, I'm saying they're about 75 to 80, 85. Yeah. It blows. Price-wise, they've gone up so much. Okay, but in today's market. Now, granted, for what you're getting as a product, it's a really good product. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, and in today's market for for a rye, I'll know, give you that. You're not going to be sad about it. Really yeah, I mean, you're not, if you if you're into rye, you're definitely not going to be sad about it. No, no, you're, yeah, exactly. And and you can find it. Generally speaking, it can be found relatively easily. Yeah, that's one that I typically always see on the shelf. It's the uh, whereas their bourbon purple top is almost a yeah. Problem. Yeah, yeah, you know, never see those. I, mean, no, I don't I've, see I've, these very often either. But go to Total not. Wine. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I don't shop there. <laughs> Sometimes you have to go in it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and click that notification bell. Come hang out with us live on Monday nights and check out our Patreon for behind the scenes fun. And until next time, keep on crusading for the whiskey in your glass. Cheers. Cheers. Why did you do that? No.